You wouldn't believe, but I studied at the gamer school, class B. And guess what it constitutes for? Yeah, right, Brawl Stars. In our school we also had class F, Fortnite, C, CSGO, and M, Minecraft, and also many other good quality games. We had our school teachers, Brawlers. Each of them had their own strategies and swore on everything to be the best brawler in Brawl Stars. The more trophies you got, the closer you sat to the board. At that moment I had 5000 trophies and my fighters were up to the strength 30. And everything's been quiet at school. Until that terrible accident. It was a regular morning. We entered the classroom and saw a horrible picture. Our top two students were tapped to the floor. Somebody scared them to death. And on the board it was written, Guest 666. Yesterday evening they stayed in the class till late. But nobody knew what happened exactly. I saw Cookie laying on the floor, but overlooked that fact. Bodies were removed from the classroom. The sign was erased. We left classes early and the school declared a mourning period. Everyone was depressed and only the school guard managed to hold it together. He approached everyone with a kind smile, calmed us down and tried to keep it up. Everyone went home. That day I constantly thought about what happened, trying to understand. But after the unsuccessful attempts, I set to play Brawl. When I entered the game, I saw that exact nickname, which was written with blood on the board. Guest 666. Someone must have wanted to emulate the murderer. I decided to kick his ass for that prank, but I had weak teammates, and so we lost. It's a pity. I had to go to school the next day. Less people came to the class. We lacked the two murdered guys and one more person. Caustic, but I saw him yesterday. Where is he? Maybe he's sick? Suddenly, the police officer arrived and said that Caustic was found Jeez. dead on the kid playground. He was taken to the swing it. and swung to death. <laughs> Guest 666 was written on the it sand near the playground. Everyone was shocked. So? Does this maniac hunt us all? What do we do but now? why? Classes were cancelled again. We went to hang out with two of my friends. I told them that while I was playing yesterday, I, I met a player with the same nick, but I lost. Sanyok offered to find this guest triple six and kick his ass. We launched our phones and began to search the servers. Finally, Vanka found him. The fight was exhausting, but he won. Excited, we all went to our homes. The next day came and I had to go to school again. There stood the police officer, for our own safety. The officer told us that Ivan was killed yesterday in the elevator. This guest 666 take him to the floor of the elevator and send it upstairs. Could it be that this maniac revenged Vanya for losing? Or this is just a coincidence. I told the officer about my assumption, but he only smirked and said that maniacs don't play any games. In the classroom, I sat with Sasha. He also thought something was missing, and together we decided to solve the puzzle and find that maniac. We installed a surveillance camera on that exact swing on the playground where Sasha died, and we began to search for that guest. 666. Sashka yes, found him first, and he managed to win him. Yes, I did it. And we were ready for the attack. When the night came, we freaked out. We glanced back at everything and waited him to show up from behind some bushes. We waited until the very morning, but he didn't Why come. Didn't he come. Strange. Could it be a mistake? We went to the school, sleepy. Sasha went to wash up and I laid down to my desk to take a nap. I slept for the entire class. When I woke up, I realized that Sasha was missing. 
I went to look for him during the break time and I found him dead in the bathroom. That guest 666 drowned him right in the toilet. So that must be the truth. But Mania kills everyone who wins him in Brawl Stars. So that time, policemen trusted me. We told us not to play Brawl Stars and closed our classroom temporarily. We moved to the class M, Minecraft, and that was terrible. We had to play that boring game. Teachers told us to break blocks all day long. One of our own even threw up. And I was at loss. How could one play this for years? The police could not find the maniac. And we had to go to Minecraft every day. We began to degrade and to lose our skill. I felt like that couldn't last any longer for me. And I decided to find this guest 666 myself. I asked to leave earlier, sat down in the hole and linked to the band Brawl Stars network. And I was lucky as I bumped into that guest almost immediately and I tried to beat him up. But I lost again. At that very moment, I heard the screams of the school's guard. For some reason, he was celebrating. As I came closer to him, I saw this exact cookies from the crime scene on his table. I asked him if he played Brawl Stars, but he replied that he didn't and hid his phone under the table. I suspected that he was the guest 666. I shared my thoughts with the police officer. He checked the guard's phone, but he didn't find any games there. And as to the cookie, that's not a reliable evidence. You could buy this from any store, he said. The guard was kindly smiling as always, and I thought that I was wrong Sorry. about him. But I decided to check everything for the last time. Need to check his. An excellent idea came to my mind. In the evening, when everyone left Bye. from school, I stayed. I've set some traps like in Home Alone and began to search for guest 666. As I found him, I could finally beat him and without any delays went to check for guard's reaction. He wasn't at his place. I felt someone's gaze at my back, turned around and saw guest 666. This must be the guard, I thought. He changed his clothing and I began to run up the stairs. The maniac ran after me. But the stairs were slathered with oil and only I knew where to step. He slipped and fell heavily. Once he raised his head up, a chair landed right on his face. When he came to the senses, I have already hidden in the classroom. He grabbed the handle, but the handle was electrified and he got a current running through his fingers. He was enraged when he entered the classroom and he wanted to crack me down quickly. But he stepped on one of my traps and a paint of bucket fell right on his head. I ran quickly to him and hit the bucket with the baseball bat using all of my strength. He collapsed and passed out. But my success didn't last long. The school guard approached me and hit me with a teaser. And he was still kindly smiling. And he helped the maniac to get up. And the guest took his mask off. Turned out that it was his crazy gamer grandmother. It was her who was playing Brawl Stars. And when she was losing, she cried and complained to her grandson. And they revenged us together for our triumphs. They taped me to the chair and put it to the edge of the roof. What are you doing? They tied the chair leg to the attic door so that if someone opened it, I would fall down from the roof. In the morning, my classmates saw me and called the police. And the policeman ran to rescue me. No, wait! Sound of the game woke me up. I opened my eyes and couldn't understand where I was and what happened to me. My legs were in a cast and all my body hurt. A woman in a white robe came inside and injected some anesthetics 
My pain went away, but the questions remained. I asked the nurse what happened to me, and she explained that I've been laying here in the hospital since I fell from the roof, that I have both legs broken, bruises all over my body, and also a concussion. I couldn't remember anything, even my own name, and I felt very bad about it. But then the nurse injected some more of the painkillers and left. The guy that laid in the room with me showed me a YouTube video in which I fell from the roof. It was terrible. Some woman rushed inside of the room and began to cry by my bed. It turned out that she was my mother, but I couldn't remember this either. I was taken to the doctor's office. He asked me a lot of questions, but I only had one answer for all of them. I don't remember. The doctor stated his conclusion. I had a memory loss because of the severe heat with my head. He said that if I want to gain my memory back, I had to be put under a great stress. Then came the policemen. They were very upset that now they couldn't learn who did this to me. Because I still couldn't remember who tied me up on that roof. That was how my first day in the hospital went. The night came and patients went to sleep. A weird noise woke me up. My neighbor Ben was seeking something in my nightstand while mumbling something weird. I called him, but he didn't bother. Ben took the chocolate, sat on his bed and began to eat it with his eyes closed. I realized that he was a sleepwalker. It looked super weird. I even took my phone and captured this and went to sleep. In the morning, I showed the video to Ben, but he wasn't surprised. He told me that he got here precisely because of that. He stepped out of his apartment window at night. Luckily, he lived on the first floor and he only broke one leg. We laughed and went to have our breakfast. I took the wheelchair while Ben took the crutches. We went to the first floor. A kind guard met us and helped to make it to the canteen, while another kind cleaner served us the food. We were very surprised of this service. It was a perfect hospital, but I felt like I have seen them both somewhere, this guard and the lady, but I could not remember. They had my least favorite porridge for breakfast, so I refused to eat. Ben ate my portion and we went for a walk. Ben was a funny guy. He made jokes about himself all the time. Suddenly he grabbed his stomach and fell down. I freaked out and began to shout for help. Doctors rushed and took him to the life support room. I went to my room, frightened, and sat there waiting for him. Suddenly, my memory began to come back. I remembered that I attended the gamer's school and that my classmates were killed by the guest 666. Then I remembered the night when I was hunted by this guest and his accomplice. But instead of their heads and faces, I only saw cookies. The nurses brought Ben inside. He was all green. The doctor said that he was intoxicated with the red poison. The policeman came inside and interrogated me about that. I told him that today Ben ate porridge for breakfast and that someone might have put the poison in there. But the policeman told me that he has checked the canteen and found no poison in the porridge. Then I told him about the guard and the cleaning lady and assumed that it was them who could poison Ben. The policeman smeared, but went to interrogate them. The hospital guard lied that me and Ben are two weirdos, and that he saw Ben eating food wastes from the trash can. The policeman was very surprised. He thought we both were idiots, and closed that case, while telling the psychiatrist to keep an eye on both of us. Watch this lunis. Closer to the evening, Ben woke up and started joking around <laughs> as if nothing had we happened. He offered to swap beds to play prank on the nurse. I agreed because it was boring 
and we wanted to have some fun. The nurse came and brought the medicine prescribed by the doctor. She injected the anesthetics to Ben and sedatives to me. I fell asleep. The policeman woke me up in the morning. The whole room was in blood. Ben laid in my bed, his head was cut, and his body was all in knife steps. I screamed. Guest 666 did that. The policeman began to ask me if I saw the ones who did this and why did I sleep in Ben's bed. I told him about yesterday's prank, that we swept the places and that I passed out right after the injection. The interrogation ended and I was moved to another room, to an old man. It stand in there. So I decided to go over the hospital. Passing by the guard's table, I saw the cookies. And immediately I remembered everything about the guest 666 and his accomplice. It was them who wanted to poison me, but Ben ate my porridge. And during the night, it was them who killed Ben because he was sleeping in my bed. I went all pale. The guard came closer to me. He must have been worried that I could remember something. Thus, he offered me to go to the toilet to wash my face. I realized that he wanted to take me to a deserted place and kill me. I pretended as if I didn't remember anything and just wanted to go back to my room. The guard kindly accompanied me and even helped me to climb to the bed. I warmly thanked him. As soon as he left, I began to cry from fear. I did not want to die and didn't know what to do. That old man, his name was Schwartz, started to comfort me. I told him about my problem. I was lucky. Schwartz was a former CIA agent and promised to help me. At first, he advised me to call the police. I called that policeman and told that I remembered everything. The police officers came and gathered everyone for the interrogation. The cleaning lady started crying and the guard began to comfort her. I told the officers that she was the guest 666 and that the guard was her accomplice. But the policeman didn't believe me because I did not have any evidence. They thought that I went nuts because of the concussion. The policeman brought me back to my room. When Schwartz saw the policeman, he happily hugged him and started to remember how they both fought together in Vietnam. But the policeman was astonished and told that he wasn't even born that time. The grandpa pretended that he was just mistaken. The policeman left. I realized why the old man did that. Schwartz had the policeman's phone in his arms. Apparently, the moment he hugged him, he carefully took out his phone. But I could not understand why he needed this phone. Schwartz told me about the plan on how to catch the guest 666, and I agreed because it was the only way to survive. We came to the basement of the hospital. Schwartz built a trap for the guest 666 and asked me to call the hospital guard and tell him that I dropped my phone to the floor and that I cannot lift it. And so I did. Meanwhile, the cop in the police station found out that he lost his phone and he asked an IT worker to look phone? for its location. The Learning the coordinates, the he went to the hospital to take his belonging. I sat as a bait and grandpa hid in the ambush and got ready to catch the guest 666. We heard the elevator approaching. It opened and I saw the policeman. He was angrily telling me off because of his phone. He took the phone from the floor and our trap worked and the box hit the cop and smashed him. I shouted at Schwartz because of his idiotic plan, but he stood amazed as a guilty child. According to his plan, the policeman had to arrive a bit later. Suddenly, we heard the elevator again. The door opened and we saw Ben's head 
The head began to talk. He told us that that night, guest 666 could not kill him because of the painkillers. And then, he just decided to tear off his head and hide it inside of the box room. The old man suggested us to get out from the basement. We came inside of the elevator and tried to get out, but it did not work. Suddenly, the TV switched on and we saw the guest 666. He said that if we want to survive, we need to activate the elevator. He also said that the first hint was inside of Ben's head. The water appeared on the floor. I understood that we would sink if we didn't get out of there. The water was arriving and Schwartz decided to act. He grabbed the hammer and smashed Ben's head. There was a key inside of it. This key opened the electric board. When we entered, I froze in fear. The activator of the elevator was my mother. If we switch on the activation, the current will go through her body. The elevator will start working, but she will die. Schwartz rushed to the switcher, but I grabbed him and we both fell into the water. He wanted to switch on the activation and I held him not to let him do that. The water kept arriving and Schwartz drowned. I climbed higher and cuddled to my mom. I didn't know what to do right now. Maria shut her eyes wide open, hit by a powerful electric current. Some strange guy stood right in front of her. A sign on his hoodie stated, Anti-Guest 666. Maria realized that she was at the police station, but she could not remember how she got here. Another guy in a white robe entered the room. He opened his leather suitcase and began to think which of the three syringes he wanted to use. Finally, he grabbed the recaller and made an injection. Maria's head started spinning and all of her memories began to recover. She remembered herself when she was 15 years old, an apartment in the poorest neighborhood, irresponsible parents. She was left with no choice other than to spend all of the free time outside and her one and only friend was Manson, nicknamed Ginger. He was the craziest hooligan in the city. His father was put behind the bars for murdering a policeman. And Ginger was truly proud of that. Also, Maria remembered that Ginger had a habit of stealing sweets from the supermarket and giving them to her. He didn't like sweets himself, but he loved to eat raw meat covered with blood. Maria didn't particularly like Manson's behavior, but deep inside of herself, she hoped he would change and become a decent person. Once, Ginger went to the shop as usually to steal something, and Maria was waiting for him outside. Suddenly, the guy ran out of the supermarket. The policeman ran out a moment later, chasing after him. They ran passing the road into some alleyway. Masha ran after them. There, Masha saw Ginger pointing a gun at the policeman, while the officer stood with his hands raised in the air, asking not to shoot him. Ginger's face was somehow strange to Masha, and he fired. The policeman fell down to the ground, wheezing. Masha ran away from that place, she locked in her room and hid under the blanket. A little later a group of policemen came to their house and started interrogating her and her parents. The officers asked if they saw this boy and if they knew where he was hiding. They replied negatively and the officers left. The night came and Masha went to sleep. She was constantly tossing and turning and couldn't fall asleep. Suddenly her phone rang. She shuddered and replied. It was Ginger. He was hiding in the basement of the building she lived in. He didn't have any food and was asking Masha to bring something to eat. Masha couldn't refuse to help her best friend and she began to help him. She was stealing last slices of bread from home. She was starving herself. A week later, Ginger became bored of just sitting in one place 
and he asks the girl to bring him some books from the library. With time, he got hooked on the books, and during two years, he read all of the books from the city library. Once, Masha brought him some These books on psychology books. of manipulation and hypnosis. As Ginger read hmm, these manuscripts, he got an idea of how to control others' consciousness. One day, Maria got into big trouble. Her parents were murdered by some street hooligans. The girl fell into depression. She suffered badly. She stopped eating and drinking. Ginger decided to use her state in order to draw her into his cult. It was called the Cult of Free Guests 666. Their main goal was to revenge their own offenders. Manson found Maria's parents murderers and forcefully brought them to the basement. He took out a knife, gave it to Masha and ordered her to kill them. She obeyed, killed both of them and felt relieved. She didn't even notice, but she entirely forgot her past and became a part of this cult. As the time was passing, the cult was growing and consolidating. Manson was successfully brainwashing them, issuing the uniforms, and they were becoming the new guest 666. In order to ensure the safety, nobody saw no one's faces. As a true manipulator, Manson convinced them they were the chosen ones and that they had to clean the city from those who didn't respect them. One old man from the cult complained that people didn't want to give up their seats to him in public transport and the cultists began to kill the citizens who didn't wish to be polite in buses. Another gamer old lady was constantly losing in Brawl Stars and was killing all of the other gameers together with her grandson. One saleswoman from the supermarket was punishing every rude customer. The criminals were leaving their signature on every crime scene, which was written with blood of the victim. The police was unable to catch any of the scultists, and thus they had to establish the whole new department, Anti-Guest 666. Colonel Blatt was in charge of this special department. First off, the colonel decided to check the library. There, he learned that some strangely looking girl was taking a lot of psychology books. Vlad set up surveillance after Masha and found out that she was constantly visiting the basement of her apartment building. Coincidentally, this place was a meeting point of a group of some weird characters. The police forces looked out for the moment when the cultists would gather all in that place to start the raid. They threw a number of gas grenades inside of the basement and began the storm. Half of the cultists managed to escape to some specially prepared tunnel together with Ginger. When the SWAT group entered, Manson locked the other door which led to the tunnel, while Masha and the remaining cultists lashed out at the policemen with knives in their hands. They had to delete the data. The only person survived was Masha. As her memory recovered, Masha was shocked. Could she really be a part of a cult? Could she murder these people? The doctor made it clear for her. He explained that Ginger was purposely looking for the people who lived under the constant stress, as they were the easiest to brainwash. Bled showed her the video surveillance footage. Ginger was standing in the alleyway, handing a roll of money over to those hooligans who would later kill Masha's parents right at the same place. Ginger did that so that Masha would eventually fall into depression and he would easily get control over her. Masha got shivers. Was that real? Could her best friend do this to her? She began to cry. Black offered her to become the double agent and work for the anti-guest 666 group and Masha agreed immediately. She was acquainted with the cultist way of thinking and could easily find each and every of them. The police officers began to catch the criminals right at the crime scenes, but none of them 
knew where Ginger, their messiah, was hiding. One day, they caught another cultist, the old man. During the interrogation, he confessed that one gamer old lady provides Ginger with food and she must have known where he was hiding. The police set up surveillance after the last cultist. This mad old woman wanted to kill me, but I survived and ended up in a hospital. The anti-gas group realized that she would try to finish me off as I was the only witness and they began to monitor the entire hospital. Masha, disguised as a nurse, made the injections and looked after me, waiting for the gas attack to catch him right in the act. And when me and my mom were trapped underwater, Masha saved both of us. She swam to us, brought the oxygen masks and put them on our faces. The police officers managed to get rid of the water while the old woman and her grandson were arrested at the crime scene. During the interrogation at the police station, the granny refused to name the location where Ginger was hiding. But the doctor made an injection of truth serum and she told them everything. Black was freaking shocked when he learned that Ginger's new shelter was situated right at the basement of the police station. All of them rushed to the basement, but of course Ginger had left already. Also the basement was mine. One of the TV screens turned on, it was guest 666. He was laughing at them. This guest was Ginger Manson himself. The exit door locked and guest 666 offered the captives to play a survival game. Guest 666 was still out there and our lives were in danger. You are in danger. They arranged a whole classified house for me and my mom and put the security Everything police on the fine. house. We were completely safe but still, deep inside of myself I felt very anxious. I woke up once during the night because I heard some strange noises outside. I got up and quietly came closer to the window. I saw this policeman who were protecting us lying on the ground. Guest 666 must have come after us. I ran to my mom's room, but it was too late already. When I opened the door, I saw Guest standing by her bed. He killed my mother. I was about to lash out at this guy, but someone bashed me over the head from behind. Everything went dark. I fell down and passed out. The policeman and the anti gas group were walking down the dark hallway in search of an exit from the trap basement. Studded wall appeared from nowhere and started moving towards this group. Everyone began to run until they found themselves in the room with an AC pool. The TV screen turned on and guest 666 hinted that this was the testing trap and that they had to either pass the test or die. An old rusty letter was attached to the ceiling. With no hesitation, the older policeman clanged to the handhold and quickly got across to the other side. There on the wall was a lever that was supposed to lower this letter and open the door. The policeman grabbed the lever, but suddenly an electric current ran through his body. He bounced off and fell right in the pool with acid. From that, the acid level raised and activated another ladder, and the door shut open. <laughs> Guest 666 started laughing at his silly foolish victims as they could simply oh, nice. drop a couple of rocks that laid by the pool and get the same effect. The group kept moving and soon they entered some strange dimly lit room where gas pipes were attached to the walls. There were two doors in that room and the policeman's wife was locked behind one of them. The TV screen turned on again and the guest's laughter sounded once again. He offered his victims to choose the right door. The policeman fell on his knees and begged the criminal to save his wife. 
but the colonel was convinced that this was a trap. Of course, they didn't come to the compromise and thus ran separately in two different directions. When the policeman opened the door he chose, he bumped into the brick wall and his wife was just a hologram. Green deadly gas started filling the room. The poor guy began to run to another door, but he never made it. Masha shut the door close to save herself from that gas. They found themselves in yet another dark room, and it was very quiet initially. But then, an incredibly loud sound of the siren deafened and stunned them both. They couldn't bear the pain in their ears, and both passed out. I opened my eyes, and the first thing I saw was Masha and the colonel both attached to some strange machine. As to me, I was hanging just above of them. I loudly screamed, trying to wake them both up. The TV screen turned on again, and then Manson told us that we had to choose a person who would die next. Something clicked in the room, and the electric soap started spinning. The hand I was attached to started going down. The colonel saw that and swiftly pulled the construction upon himself. My soul pulled away, but the colonel's face was nearly sliced on two. So he had to pull his electric saw to stay alive. Masha cried out as then the saw touched her forehead. She pulled it away in panic and then my saw returned back to me. The colonel began to apologize as it seemed to me they decided to sacrifice me. At the prospect of death my brain suddenly switched on and began to work thinking how to survive. All of my memories and thoughts started flashing in my head. I looked around and loudly told the colonel Glad that I knew how to find the gas and how to escape from this place. With no slightest hesitation, Glad sprinted his arm and the saw cut through Masha. The chain opened, I fell down and the colonel helped me to get on the feet. I pointed at the ventilation shaft and we climbed inside of it. From fear, we crawled very quickly and got out from the shop right in the police chief's office. Of course, he was shocked. Colonel Glad yelled that the building's basement was all mine. The chief was terrified. He quickly called the sapper team and they all ran to the basement. But neither bombs nor the monitors were there upon the group's arrival. It was the most ordinary basement and there was a wall instead of the door. The colonel grabbed a wooden chair and began to batter the wall trying to show everyone that he was right. I was also trying to explain and convince them that we really were in the guest trap, but the police chief didn't want to listen and we had to leave. As soon as we left the building, the colonel grabbed me by the collar and demanded the promised information. I told him that when we were attacked while we hid in the classified house for witnesses, I saw a police radio hanging on one of the guests' belts, and also there was a number on that radio. Black went all pale, he couldn't believe that. It was the police chief's radio. It became clear how exactly they managed to find the classified house. Suddenly, the colonel began to smile, and I didn't really understand what was going on with him. But then he bent over to me and whispered to do as he did. To smile and pretend as if we were just having fun. Then we went to the park. I tried my best to repeat everything precisely after Bled. We bought some ice cream and got on the merry-go-round. And only then the colonel whispered the reason of our behavior in my ear. I started shaking. We were in a big trouble, but we had to keep it together and stay in a crowded place. But as it was getting late, the people started leaving the park and the number of guests who were following us raced higher. We freaked out and began to run right to the colonel's house, but they had been waiting for us in the corridor. Bled took out the gun and killed these two guys. 
I took their masks off and saw that these two were the professors from my own school. The colonel realized that we needed to quickly wear their costumes. As to the bodies, we dragged them inside the Blatt's apartment. He poured everything with gasoline and lit it. The apartment ignited immediately. When we came out of the building, the two guests approached us. The colonel told them that the job was done. These two congratulated us and escorted to the minivan that was waiting for us on the opposite side of the road. We climbed inside and headed to an unknown destination. But when we reached the point, the colonel was terrified as he knew this place. We quietly got out of the car and entered the house. The meeting was still going. Manson was giving a speech to all guests and to the police chief that a perfect life is awaiting for them after their death. And they all believed in that. Some shaggy, harmless bum was sitting in the chair tied up. Sometimes he littered in front of the police chief house. The guy raised his knife and was about to kill the bum, but a shot went off. The crowd freaked out as they heard the gunshots and all guests began to flee. We took our masks off and just stood there in the middle of the room, satisfied with Manson's catching. But Manson decided to go all the way. He took out the grenade and pulled the pin. The colonel quickly grabbed me and we hit him on the sofa. Manson got torn to shreds and we thought that this crazy story was over. But suddenly Manson's father and his grandmother entered the room. Ten years have passed. All the time I've been studying at the University of Innovative Technologies. I applied for a security guard's position at my own university and organized a secret laboratory in the building's basement. My time machine was almost ready, but I couldn't get plutonium, which was the crucial part for its launching. I heard some time ago that they had some plutonium here in the chemistry lab, and once during one of my night shifts, I waited until everyone left sneaked inside the lab and took that plutonium. But suddenly the chemistry professor entered the lab. She must have forgotten something and caught me right on the crime scene. She took out the phone, trying to call the police. And I was begging her not to. I explained that I wanted to steal that plutonium only because I wanted to save Roblox from its complete destruction. The chemistry professor, her name was Eladiel, didn't believe me and asked for the proof. I invited her to my lab in the basement and told her everything about the free guest 666 cult and everything about the hooligan Manson who established it. Being wanted for the policeman's murder, he'd been locked in the basement for several years self-educating himself in psychology and learning yeah. how to manipulate people. I also yeah, told her yeah. I was nearly murdered during my school years by one granny from the skull hmm. and how I was lucky to what survive happened? and get to the hospital. I told her that this He's granny dead. still managed to find me and my mom and captured us in her trap. But we got lucky again as Manson's former follower Masha from the anti-guest group found us at the last minute and saved us. This crazy granny was arrested while me and my mother were put in a classified house in order to protect us from the main guest 666, Manson. But this whole plan was also sabotage, as the police chief was a part of the cult as well. He killed my mother with his own hands and I was brought to the basement where this chief together with Manson were torturing the anti-guests. Masha died, but me and Colonel Blad managed to escape through the ventilation shaft. We disguised as a part of the guests' cult and came to the guests' meeting, where Colonel killed the police chief. But Manson decided not to give up. He detonated a grenade in his hands 
In that exact moment appeared Manson's grandmother and also his father, who had escaped from the prison earlier. Manson must have ordered his followers to plot their escape. Colonel Glad died while I was harshly wounded in the stomach and I got a new scar on my face. I managed to escape through the window. This crazy guests were searching for me for another couple of hours all over the town. Colonel Blatt may hear us in peace, for saw everything and gave me a telephone number before entering the guests' meeting. The colonel told me to dial that number if I would ever need help. And so I did. Some old guy came to pick me up. It was the colonel's father. He quickly got me back on my feet, made a new passport, and I remained to live with him. Together with the old man, we were observing the guest 666 activities. Manson's father became his successor, and the granny became his right hand. We realized that the cult integrating its forces everywhere. They had people in the police department, among firemen and paramedics, and even Roblox administration. We knew that we wouldn't succeed at stopping them in the real time, and we had to go back in time to stop Manson in his childhood. Blatt's father helped me to enter the university so that I could study the innovative technologies to build that time machine. Eladiel just stood there unable to believe that she was all surrounded by the guest 666. She realized that she could easily be murdered at any moment. I suggested her to help us and she agreed. I inserted the bulb with plutonium inside the machine and turned it on. It started working, but I had no idea how to test it. Eladiel told me that we could send an experimental mouse with a small explosive back into the past. She said that if the mouse exploded in the past, it would leave the traces of damage on the floor here in the real time. I loved that idea and we constructed a small explosive with a timer and attached the thing to the mouse. I put the mouse inside the machine, while Ella entered the data when the laboratory was not even built in the basement. She pushed the start button. The machine started working, energy streams gravitated towards the mouse, and it disappeared. The bomb had to explode after 10 seconds. We froze in anticipation. But nothing happened. The hole in the floor just didn't appear. And I couldn't understand why the time machine that I created did not work. We both went home frustrated. Suddenly, Ella noticed something strange on the wall. A photograph of some plumber was attached to the wall. He was injured here inside the university building by the terrorist mouse. There was a note under the photograph. It said that 11 years ago a plumber went to the basement to repair some tubes. There he accidentally found a strange mouse and picked it up to examine it. But suddenly the mouse exploded right in his hands. We realized that we just committed an aforethought crime. But the excitement of successful experiment overshadowed the guilt. We began to rejoice. We spent that long night surfing the internet reading some old news about Manson, as we needed to know the exact date when he killed that policeman. In the morning, we went to my secret lab in the basement and turned the time machine on. I got inside of it, Ella launched the machine and I traveled back in time. I found myself laying on the ground in an empty basement. Apparently everything worked. I went outside of the building and saw that exact hey, plumber walking towards me. I approached him and said to never, never touch strange mice in the basement, and that otherwise he would be left with no hands. He looked at me as if I was an idiot and hastily walked past me. Then I hurried to the supermarket, there I had to meet Manson before he would commit that fatal crime. But I must have arrived later than planned as Manson was already running from that policeman. I heard the sound of a gunshot coming from the alleyway. The crime was committed. <laughs> Nevertheless, I didn't despair. 
as I knew that the guy would shelter in the basement of Masha's building. I went to the police department and told them where Manson was hiding. The police chief thanked me warmly and immediately sent the SWAT group to the basement. Teenage Manson was arrested and put behind the bars. And I, in all good conscience, went to my basement and waited for the appointed time. At 12 straight, Ella turned the machine on again. A rift appeared right in front of me and I got back to the real time. I then called Colonel Blatt's father to learn what was going on and he told me everything about the new past. When Manson was put behind the bars, he wrote a letter to Masha. The girl began to visit him again in the prison and bring food and books. And during another visit, she brought the same exact psychology books. I lost my nerve and asked Ella to send me back in time again. Only this time, I grabbed a can of gas and set that stupid library on fire. When I came back, I called Black's father again, but he said that Manson accidentally found the same exact psychology books in the prison's library and that nothing has changed. Alan noticed that the floor in the basement became damaged, although I asked the plumber not to touch this explosive mouse. Suddenly, the door shut open and that wow. exact plumber appeared on the threshold. He remembered me from the time of our encounter when I asked him not to touch the mouse. And we had to explain everything, what was happening. Plumber's eyes got round. He crossed himself and said that he also wanted to help because his family died of the gas 666 hands. He knelt before us and started begging to send him back in time so that he could save his family. We felt very sorry for the plumber and decided to help and send him back in time. He successfully saved his wife and his child and hurried back to the basement. We wanted to launch the machine once again at the appointed time, but something went wrong. I saw that piece of plutonium got significantly smaller. It seemed that all of its energy died out. The plumber was monitoring the time, thinking why didn't we bring him back here? Ella told me that we didn't have any other plutonium here in the university building, and the sign from the past appeared on the floor, saying, help me. The night was cold and it was our advantage because the dogs that protected this military base were trying to get warm in their kennels. We quietly sneaked inside. Honestly, I didn't know where the colonel's father got the scheme plans of the base, but he smoothly escorted us through the corridor maze directly to the vault. There stood huge bulbs with all kinds of different substances inside. We found plutonium among them and packed her back next fully. When we got back to the fence where we left Ella, we saw a group of guests headed by the granny. They grabbed us, put the blindfolds on and took us to the unknown destination. We had a really long drive, but I had no idea where they were taking us. I only heard the iron gates opening dog barking and some people talking to each other. When they took the blindfolds off, I realized that we were in the guest's secret lair. It was a whole base camp with a fence and its security. Also there stood several vans for their prisoners' transportation. A huge fire was burning in the middle of the base and the cage was hanging just above of it. It seemed like it was Roblox Apocalypse base where the guests were killing civilians. Today. They tied us to the poles. Manson's father <laughs> came out of his shelter and this exact plumber was walking next to him. He became a guest 666 as well. Manson's father demanded us to tell him where the time machine was. He wanted to go back in time to save his son. Colonel Blatt's father shouted that he would never tell where he hid the machine. 
Oh yeah, guys, I almost forgot to tell you. After the unsuccessful attempt to return the plumber on time, and after seeing the writings on the floor, we realized that we had to leave this basement immediately because the guests from the past learned that we had the machine and they knew where we were hiding it. We transported the machine to another location, hid it and went to the military base for plutonium. When guests arrived to the basement, the only thing they found was a smiley face. Manson's father stabbed the old man with his trident and threatened me. But I knew that they would kill us anyway, and thus I definitely told the main guest to go to hell. He smeared an order to shove Ella inside the cage and roast her together with other prisoners. Ella screamed and cried loudly. I started panicking as I liked her a lot and didn't want to lose her. I agreed to save his son in the past, but with only one condition. A plumber had to come with me. Manson's father said yes. They untied me, gave me one piece of plutonium and we headed to the hiding place. The guest's leader turned out to be dumber than I could imagine. He simply sent his followers to track us, so that I led them directly to the machine. I tried to talk anything? to the plumber, you tried to ask dad. if he remembered his family, his wife and a child, but he just walked quietly like a zombie and didn't answer any of my questions. That was the moment when I remembered something very important. Bled told me once that if the guests get electrocuted, he will snap out and there is a slight chance that he will wake up from his hypnosis. But I had no idea how to do that and God must have heard me and it started raining. I heard the thundering. Not too far from us, I saw a lightning and offered the plumber to wait out the rain. He agreed immediately and we quickly ran to the nearest tree. I knew that one shouldn't stand under the tree in a storm because a lightning can strike that tree and a powerful electrical charge will run right through your body. And that happened. The lightning struck the tree we stood under and the plumber got electrocuted badly. I ran to him. But what I saw was not a plumber, it was a charred skeleton. The guests that were following us saw everything and ran to chase me. I quickly crossed the road right in front of the truck. It was going so fast the driver didn't have time to brake. They were crushed. It was my chance. I went to save Roblox on my own. We hid the time machine right under the guest's noses in their old meeting basement. I inserted the plutonium inside the flask and launched the machine. Meanwhile, Elodiel was trying to get out of the cage. She asked the civilians for a hairpin or something small, like a needle. But everyone was scared, and they stood quietly. She noticed that one of the guys had his glasses and simply bore them. Then she made a hook from one of the glasses temples, easily unlocked the cage, and got outside. Another two guys went with her, but all the others were still afraid. Meanwhile, the guests that were supposed to look after the cage just sat by the fire toasting the red sticks. The escapees almost sneaked out of the base camp, but suddenly one of the captured civilians yelled that some of the prisoners wanted to escape. The guests mobilized quickly and captured Eladiel once again. The snitch that raised the alarm was accepted into the ranks of guest 666. He pulled the lever with his own hands and the cage fell into the fire. It was a calm summer day. My mom was walking in the park. I wasn't born yet, but I would very, very soon. I just stood there thinking what would I tell to my mother, how could I explain everything and not scare her. Finally, I got myself together and approached her. She thought I was crazy just as I expected. 
that when I showed her the pictures from my phone and told her everything I wanted, she believed me and froze in one place shocked. We sat on a bench and began to think, how could we fix that terrible destiny? My mom offered me to visit Manson's family to see how they were living. When we came to their house, we saw a horrific scene. A very young boy, Manson, stood by the doorway hugging with his father, watching the nurses carrying Manson's mother to the ambulance. Her face was covered, which meant that she died. This must have been the exact reason why they became so malevolent. We came closer to them to express our condolences to them, but Manson's father yelled at us as a wild dog and headed to the apartment. Manson remained outside, he just stood there and cried. Mom gently hugged the little boy and he calmed down. All three of us went to the apartment to clean it. I made some soup for dinner and set up the table. Manson's depressed father felt a little better and joined us. After this first meeting, we began to visit them every day. There I also met young Masha. With time, my mom and Manson's father became very good friends. I didn't have my own father and thus mom moved to Manson's dad and they started living together. Then I was born and guess who was looking after me and bringing me up. I hoped that I fixed everything and I had to go because I set the time machine on auto launching earlier. The rift appeared just on time. I went in, got back to my time and didn't recognize the basement. It was very bright and clean. Sewing machine stood on the wooden tables and Masha was going around commanding her workers. She was very happy to see me. I asked her where Manson and his father were. She looked at me with astonishment and said that Manson was walking in the park with their kids, while his father was on duty in the police department. My mom entered the room, we looked at each other with slight smiles. Only me and her knew the real past. I remembered about Ella Yale and ran to the university, but the rector told me that Ella wasn't studying there anymore. She became a blogger and now was occupied with making games and Roblox. Guys, this is an absolute truth. I'll leave a link to her channel under this video. You guys can subscribe and play our most favorite game Roblox together with her. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. I've been on the flex since flex zone Neighborhood all in your eardrums I ain't never scared like bone crush Boy, I got God, don't fear none My line busy, take no call